This video covers the fundamentals of JavaScript. The structure of this video is as follows. What JavaScript is, what JavaScript looks like, a brief history of JavaScript, the structure of JavaScript within an HTML document, the syntax of JavaScript, and the summary. All right, let's get started. What is JavaScript? JavaScript is a computer programming language. JavaScript was originally implemented as part of web browsers so that client scripts could interact with users. If you think of HTML as describing the structure of the document and CSS as describing the look of the document, JavaScript controls the interaction with the document. The most common uses of JavaScript are to write functions embedded in or included in the HTML of a page. These functions then interact with the document object model, abbreviated the DOM. A collection of these functions can be and are distributed as JavaScript libraries. jQuery, Prototype, MooTools, and D3, amongst others, are examples of JavaScript libraries. What JavaScript looks like. JavaScript can look like the following. As you can see, the script starts with a script tag, then a function called show alert is defined. Within this function, a variable named msg is declared. This variable is passed to a function named alert, then the function ends. Finally, the function show alert is called. Brief history of JavaScript. JavaScript, then called LiveScript, was first shipped as part of the beta release of the Netscape browser called Navigator in September 1995. Although it shares its name with Java, the two languages are very different. In December 1995, the name was changed to JavaScript from LiveScript. Microsoft included JavaScript in its own web browser, Internet Explorer, in August 1996. In November 1996, Netscape submitted JavaScript to ECMA ECMA International for consideration as an industry standard. It was accepted and the script language became a standard. JavaScript, JScript, and ActionScript are considered dialects of ECMAScript. As of today, the Oracle Corporation owns the trademark to quote-unquote JavaScript. So when we talk about JavaScript, 98% of the time we are really talking about ECMAScript. The structure of JavaScript within an HTML document. JavaScript can be inserted into an HTML document in four main places. Inline within an HTML element, in the HTML body, within the body section of an HTML document, in the HTML head, within the head section of an HTML document, and as a linked file specified in the HTML head. This linked file can be on the same server or on a different server. Or for this tutorial, the linked file will live in the same folder on the same computer. Let's take a look at the four ways to write JavaScript within an HTML document. As you can see on the screen, I have two windows open. I have the Chrome web browser open with an HTML file that is being served from my desktop. And I have an HTML document. If I add something to the HTML document, I can reload it on my browser. The first JavaScript that we will add to this HTML document is an inline JavaScript function within an HTML element. What we are going to do is we are going to add an input button so that when it is clicked, it will execute a JavaScript function for us called alert. All right, we save it here. When we reload it, we see our button. When we click on it, the JavaScript alert comes up. That is how you do an inline JavaScript function. We can also type in side of the body a script element that will get executed. So we'll say this is text JavaScript. And here we will alert body hello. Oops. Then we close the script tag. When we reload the file here, we get a JavaScript hello immediately because it reloads it. When we click OK, it then continues building the document. So it puts our hello world and puts our button. And then we still have our inline hello. Additionally, 
we can put the JavaScript inside of the head element of the HTML. Here we will have an alert that says it's the head. And we save it. So here we see JavaScript in the head, JavaScript in the body, and within the element. So when we reload, we get our head hello. That's the first part that's executed. We click OK. The second one that's executed is the body hello. Then we get the hello world and then the button. So when we click the button, it's still there. The last way we can put JavaScript into the document is to attach it to another file. So we can say script source equals other file.js and it will be text JavaScript. All right, now what we need to do is we need to create a new file that will be called other file.js. And what we're going to have that file do is it's going to alert us that other file hello. All right, we'll save it in our example folder and we will call it other file.js. All right, we can close this for now. So when we reload it, we get the other file hello. Then we get the head hello. Then we get the body hello. And finally, we get the hello world and the button. When we click the button, it still says inline hello. As you can tell, the document is executed from top to bottom. So the other file, then this JavaScript, then this JavaScript, and finally when we press this button, JavaScript. This will be important later when we decide when and where we need to put our d3.js JavaScript and how we load the file. The syntax of JavaScript. The most basic JavaScript syntax to be aware of is case sensitivity, what semicolons do, comments, and the difference between double equals and triple equals. So in this case, I am going to look at the developer JavaScript console. So the first way we look at case sensitivity is looking at a variable called apples. So we'll define apples as being equal to one. We'll define apples with a capital A as being equal to two. We'll define apples with a capital S at the end as being equal to three. When we compare apples to apples, oops, it's true. Compare capital apples to capital apples, it's also true when we compare apples with a capital S to apples with a capital S, it's also true. However, we, when we compare apples to apples with a capital A, it's false. So this is very important when you're reading JavaScript documents or when you're writing out your own code to make sure that you're very careful with the sensitivity of your variables. The next thing we want to be careful is to make sure that we add semicolons at the end of each line. Let's write a function called temp where we add the value of one plus two and return it. All right, so we have our temporary function, it returns three. What can happen, however, is you can write something like this. As you can see, we didn't put a semicolon here. We put a semicolon here, and we're treating this white space as if it didn't matter. Now when we call temp, it's undefined. The reason why this happens is JavaScript will do an automatic semicolon injection. So when we wrote this, as it read the code, it actually put a semicolon here. So it's going to return an undefined because it doesn't get to here when it returns the function. The next thing we want to make sure we pay attention to is what a comment is. So there's two ways to comment in JavaScript. We can do a double forward slash, or we can do forward slash asterisk. So it's important to pay attention when you're reading someone else's code or when you're commenting your code to make sure you're using comments throughout it. Lastly, we want to look at the difference between double equals and triple equals. Let's clear the code. We can have one, which is a number. We can also have the string 
of 1, which is the string of 1. If we say 1 double equals the string of 1, it says true. If we say 1 triple equals the string of 1, it's false. Why is this? The double equals does a type conversion, whereas the triple equals does not do a type conversion. If we use type of in JavaScript to look at the one, we see that it's a number. However, if we look at the type of one with quotes, it's a string. So the double equal will convert the string to a number, whereas the triple equal will say they are not the same type of thing because one of them is a number and one of them is a string. That is the most basic JavaScript syntax to be aware of as we get started. As we go along, we'll pick up much more of the JavaScript syntax as we code. Summary. In this video, you have learned what JavaScript is, what JavaScript looks like, a brief history of JavaScript, the structure of JavaScript within an HTML document, the syntax of JavaScript, and the summary.